If you talk to people who like Dark Souls, they'll generally cite the combat as the reason why, and it's no wonder, it's really quite good. However, there are a lot of really good, hard games out there, and they haven't connected with people quite like Dark Souls has. There's something more going on in Dark Souls, and I'm not talking about the lore exactly, because many players don't really care about that. No, there's something about the world that just feels good to be in. As a developer, this is a mystery because it's important to understand why people like a given game, and after talking to a lot of people who rave about the combat, I've come to believe that there's something deeper going on, even for those people. At the heart of Dark Souls is a rich, archetypal structure, and that's something that people have been responding to since media began. If we can better understand that thing, the games industry has a lot to gain. I'm John from Over the Moon, and this is the first of a series of videos about the deeper structure of video games. Take the bonfire. In Dark Souls, fire represents civilization. That's very well established. Thus began the age of fire. But again, you might not care about the lore. In fact, let's assume you skip the intro altogether. It really doesn't matter. Bonfires are a compelling mechanic. They're easy to understand, and the reason, I think, is because you're sort of possessed by an idea that fire and light are associated with safety. More on that later, but people have been exploring this idea through stories for a long time. The mythological hero is the one who leaves the safety and light, descends into chaos and darkness, and brings back something of value, thereby increasing the reach of civilization. In fact, you could conceptualize civilization itself as a series of linked bonfires, on the edge of which lies an infinite chaos that mankind is continually exploring. That might seem far-fetched, but it isn't. This idea is everywhere. It's in Minecraft, for Christ's sakes. I mean, what do you do in survival mode? Well, you start by frantically getting your hands on some coal so that you can make torches before the darkness comes, thereby establishing a safe haven for yourself. What do you do then? You go and explore and find things of value. However, if you explore too far, you die when the night comes because you're overextended. So as you explore out, you bring the fire with you, extending your little civilized habitable zone. It's the exact same process. People take to this process naturally, without the need for explanation, because I think this is probably an archetypal idea. Carl Jung understood archetypes to be sort of well-formed concepts or patterns in the collective unconscious. We're not usually aware of these patterns. They're sort of pre-conscious, things that we act out and dramatize in literature or video games for that matter. Also, I have no idea how these patterns got there. Maybe it's because prehistoric kids who didn't stay close to the fire were picked off by predators, or maybe it's just a useful idea that emerged imagistically as a sort of collective meme. But as a result, the idea of the safety, warmth, and light of fire has been, probably over thousands of years, cooked into your behavior. So too has the idea that we need to venture out of our safe zones into dangerous territory where we can find something of value. These behaviors are what you are. Before you even know who you are, you are those things. And people find it meaningful to act out these behaviors and even come to become aware of them. So when we find a book, movie, whatever that shows an archetype to us, we really take to it. The key insight here is that it might be possible to design elements that are deeply meaningful for players without them needing to have a shred of awareness as to why. But let's get into the details later. First, I made a claim that Dark Souls is pervasive with archetypal ideas and that everyone responds to them, and you might not buy that. Let's play a game. I'm going to describe, in detail, a core central feeling I think is in the Dark Souls series. You check, honestly, to see if my description matches how you already feel. And do let me know in the comments. I don't think I'm wrong, but I could be, and this video is also just me thinking in public. Ready? Let's take Dark Souls 3. Right off the bat, the game feels Dark Soulsy. It's weird and a little surreal. It's not clear what you are exactly either. Unkindled ash, whatever the hell that means. It's certainly not good exactly. In contrast, many games have you play as I am heavy weapons guy, and this is my weapon. That guy. Dark Souls, on the other hand, is closer to I pity the sorry souls. That guy. But more to the point, there's something about the world. It's not happy, definitely. It's closer to sad, but that's too imprecise. 
Post-apocalyptic is closer, but that's not really it either because Horizon Zero Dawn is post-apocalyptic, as is Fallout, but in both games there's a lot more hope and a functioning culture that you belong to. No, Dark Souls is more post-post-post-post-apocalyptic, as in whatever culture was here is maybe so far gone that it might be irretrievably lost, and that's where the sadness is. There was something here that was once great, Maybe, but it's so long forgotten that you might never know it, and in my opinion, that's the feeling that permeates certainly Dark Souls 1 and 3. Hopefully you agree so far. It's more than a feeling though, because despite the fact that you almost certainly don't understand what the hell you're doing, you're compelled by whatever strange tradition exists in this world to go do some kind of meaningful things for an end goal that's hard to understand, linking the fire. You see, the tradition of the world isn't completely dead, because you're still acting it out, and therein lies the archetypal idea. You see, each and every one of us is born into our cultures without any idea of what they are or why they exist. We're led around by them blindly until we become adults. At that point, we come to know our culture as adults, and decide whether or not we want to carry traditions forward. You see. Your culture too is dead, in that it was created or upheld by people who are old and becoming less relevant. It's old and dying, dead and blind. So what do you do? Well, in a manner of speaking, you do an archaeological exhuming of, you could say, father culture, and in the process of finding the value and meaning in your traditions, to the extent that you value them, resurrect it in yourself. That's if you find value in your culture. You could, of course, let the flame die and usher in an age of dark. I know that might sound a bit abstract, and you might be thinking that I'm overanalyzing, and I am! See, these things aren't ideas as such. They're images with a different sort of information encoded in them. Visual artists are drawn to certain images because they find them interesting. The question is why? Well, it's only after making the image and thinking about it that anyone can guess why. These aren't abstract ideas. They're like early attempts to represent patterns of existence or something like that. They capture a piece of who we are. Consider that central feeling of loss in Dark Souls, given that you agree that it's there. It's sad. Well, why is that sad? Why would you find it sad that something that might have been great is now perhaps lost forever? What does it matter that you're wandering in a dead world with no idea where the hell to go? Well, I think it matters because that's who we are, and that's what we do. It's a problem that every new generation of human beings has to relate to. This is also the answer to the question of whether or not I'm understanding the intentions of the developers. If these ideas weren't in us, such that we could express them without knowing, they would never have been expressed to begin with. The ancient Mesopotamians didn't make stories about order and chaos because Carl Jung showed up in a time machine and told them about archetypes. But I digress. Back to Dark Souls. The two examples I cited earlier are by no means exhaustive. I could probably dedicate a series of videos to archetypes in Dark Souls, such as the ideas of sacrifice, humans as ash being burned in fire, cycles of death and rebirth, going hollow, and a handful of other rich ideas. But I'd like to make a more general point with this video. In my opinion, Dark Souls did something more important than its fantastic combat and level design. It proved that people aren't stupid and that people are hungry for rich ideas, even if they don't like to think about them. In other words, it's not commercially insane to make art, you could say. I think it's quite the opposite. The question is, what does that mean, and how would a developer do this? Here's how we think it works at Over the Moon. For game developers, the key is to draw inspiration from a deep enough place, and then articulate those ideas to the point that they're clear and accessible. Picture an ocean. On the surface are ideas and images that are common and almost stereotypical. Muscle shooter gun guy is up here, as is sword man and ninja dude and save the girl plots. People tend to respond to this stuff because it's incredibly familiar. Way down in the depths in archetypal space are half-formed weird images that aren't easy to understand. Perhaps a coiled sword creating a timeless fire by being thrust into an ashen pile of human bones is down here, for example. Stuff down here is usually viewed as art. It's rich and deeply meaningful. However, it's not accessible. Cynically speaking, video games generally fall into two categories. 
AAA games often stay up here because it's safe, and indie games sometimes explore down here because they can. This sometimes means boring, derivative, stereotype AAA games, but it also sometimes means pretentious, inaccessible, poorly expressed psychobabble in indie games because the ideas in them offer no way in for the viewer. The project hasn't been raised out of the depths of unconsciousness far enough so that there is a simple way for players to just be in it. However, the meaning-laden world of Dark Souls, with its fun combat, does both in my opinion. I know it's unintuitive to see Dark Souls as accessible, but the world has been expressed clearly enough that these ideas can be felt just by being in the world, and people are hungry to be immersed in that richness. It's my guess that Dark Souls started in a deeper place. Take that image of the bonfire. What the hell does it mean? Why is it interesting? Well, the only way to find out is to make it, reflect on it, and to try and drag it up out of the depths of unconsciousness into a place where people can interact with it. Let me give you an example by way of shameless self-promotion. When I started working on The Fall, it wasn't The Fall. It was just a character model with an opaque covered faceplate that called out to me for some reason. After making it, I spent a while just wondering why it interested me. And since the faceplate was opaque, who exactly was in the suit? It then occurred to me that perhaps the person in the suit was unconscious and that the character here was the AI on board the suit who was trying to save his life. People have responded well to that premise, but it's still not a game, and it took a couple years to properly articulate what that game was, because encoded in that core image is a whole slew of other ideas about what the character should be doing. Mm -hmm, dear, and help an old lady across the street. Mm -hmm. This is a process of raising the ideas to the level where they're accessible, and it's only after this process is done that you can look back at the project and see that it makes sense. For example, in the fall, you're forced to go through a bizarre training course for domestic robots, where you're validated for performing menial tasks you weren't designed for. Baby has stopped crying. I really didn't know why this was the right story at the time, but really, what does it feel like to be in control of a body that isn't yours? To not own your own body? Well, obviously it feels profoundly invalidating, and needing to perform a series of inappropriate actions to justify your existence is intricately linked to who the character is. And surprisingly, that's kind of similar to the Dark Souls idea I mentioned. I mean, what do you do when the expectations placed upon you from your culture don't match who you are? This is how you can create a series of rich ideas from a single image of a generic space guy with an opaque visor if you're willing to reflect on why it calls to you and pull it up out of the depths. And again, players don't have to think about these things in order to find this meaningful. It's my contention that if a world and gameplay are meaning laden enough, players will find them compelling, even without having to actively think about them. But don't take my word for it. If you like the video, subscribe and keep an eye on Over the Moon. The Fall Part 2 is our biggest effort to run this process yet, so when it launches we'll discover how right or wrong I was. Here's hoping.